welcome back to the Daily Dose of Vitamin C. And today, for your daily squeeze, I have someone really special with me. I know you guys all know about him. His name is Ivan. And we've been reading all about his thoughts at his blog called CreatingComposure.com. I'm a big fan of his work. He is able to make creating psychology in such bite-sized pieces and make it so easy to digest for everyone. I'm really glad to have you here. Thanks for coming by, Ivan. How are you? I'm doing great, Celeste. Thank you for having me on and it's, it's great to be here. Oh, perfect. Where are you right now? I'm in Montreal, uh, Quebec, in Canada. So, Ivan, um, I know you've been drinking for quite a while, but it would be wonderful if you could just tell us a little bit more about your journey as a trader. What got you started and what have you been through? Let us know. Tell, tell us more about yourself. Sure. Um, so, again, my name is Ivan. I, I am a trader. I trade for a living. and. I've been doing that since 2006, full time that is, because I quit my last job <laughs> in 2006. So yeah, before that I, I took little jobs here and there. I'm, I'm a high school dropout by the way. I dropped out mm. not because I didn't like school, but mm -hmm. because um, just I, I had a learning difficulty uh, mm -hmm. as I told you a, a little bit earlier. Uh, I'm, you know, a very slow learner, so mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why I didn't do well at school. Uh, and and also, I was inspired. I grew up in a very difficult area in the suburbs of Paris, mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah, given those different circumstances, it was very difficult for me to follow a normal curses. Let's mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I've been. Um, trading since 2006 i struggled a lot at first and eventually i got better uh 2013 was my first profitable year actually so wow. you know about five years later mm -hmm. uh, and you know i've been profitable ever since i i think 2006 my results were so so mm -hmm. last year 2008 was also a, a, a losing year for me uh 2009 you know we'll, we'll see uh, so so far so good mm -hmm. but overall from 2013 14 15 mm -hmm. 17 uh i've i've been profitable wow uh yeah so i i think it's it's fair to say that i've been able to crack the code and mm -hmm. it it has to do with a healthy respect for the the mindset component yeah uh which I, I think too many people ignore. Okay. So it took you quite a while to get there, huh? Yes, and and it was really slow progress. You know, it didn't. It, it wasn't something that just hit me. It, mm -hmm. it was really slow, steady progress, and mm -hmm. I went through through a lot of, uh, I'd say, emo emotional turmoil. You know, wow. I, I, I thought a lot about giving up, uh -huh. but if eventually select when when you stick with something long enough you mm -hmm. know you you eventually you eventually learn mm -hmm. right you, you eventually learn to get a hang of it and, mm -hmm. and and that's what i recommend to to most uh my readers mm -hmm. whether it's on twitter or or you know my website yeah just be in the game stay in the game focus on learning mm -hmm. and develop a healthy respect for the mindset component because i think it's a huge part of this game i really love that actually um i really love talking about building slow progress in trading because a lot of traders think they could be an overnight success in trading simply because it's so easy to open an account and people get people who from different walks of life become successful at it they think it's easy they do not know how much we had to sacrifice just to get what we currently have right now yeah absolutely yeah for, for sure people they come into this field and they mm -hmm. you know they, they think that it's, it's going to be straightforward mm -hmm. it rarely is you know <laughs> i i don't know anyone if if you hear uh 
all the success stories, you know, all the, all the, all the legendary traders, whether we're talking about Paul Tudor Jones yeah. or, or anyone else, you know, it, it, you know, it's, it's been hard for, for them at, at first. They've, they've dealt, you know, they had to go through ups and downs. And that's for a very basic reason. People, most people are, are ruled by emotions like fear, greed, and envy. And it leaves them prone to, to, um, to, to making, you know, costly trading mistakes. Yeah. And so, so, so I feel like you, you have to come to a point where you develop maturity in, in yeah. emotions uh-huh. towards, you, you know, you just, it's a superior way of, of being and, and acting mm-hmm. in the market. And most people don't have that. Now I'm getting more curious, right? So what's your typical day look like? It's it's very simple, you know. When first thing I do when I wake up in the morning mm-hmm. is that I, I meditate for about 20 30 minutes. Wow. Okay. And that's the first that, thing you do, it. not even yeah. your phone. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing that. So so one thing one thing I think it's important for your listeners to to know about me is that I have a background as a monk. I I used to I've spent a lot of time on. You know meditation retreats and living in buddhist monasteries across the world wow in europe in north america in asia in 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 south africa in mauritius and so I, i've spent close to six months of my life living as, as a monk right mm-hmm. so meditating from morning from 4 a.m in the morning to 9 p.m at night oh my gosh and doing that on on a daily basis basically and and holding a vow of silence and all these things. So I've, I've noticed that meditation has brought tremendous change in my life. Yes. You know, I used to be very, a very neurotic person, very someone who's constantly lost in thought and, and just someone who feels very miserable as a result. Mm-hmm. And so meditation has given me a certain understanding of my mind and that's why I keep doing it it helps me act in a better way in the world and and yes. it just be be the best trader I can be wow and it's but the, the thing about meditation is that it's not a one-time thing it's a practice mm-hmm. you know that's why it's called a practice it takes the repeated uh, uh, seeing and learning and experiencing to, mm-hmm. to effect any kind of transformation in your life Mm-hmm. And so that's 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 why I keep doing it. I do it two times a day. Wow! In the morning, at night, and I I do it for twenty thirty minutes each time. So yeah, coming coming back to what I was saying, it, it's uh, I, that's the first thing I do in the morning when I wake up, and then right after that, I'm gonna take uh, a, a nice cup of coffee. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then. I turn on my computers mm-hmm. and I see what the markets are doing, where futures are at, mm-hmm. what my positions look like, and adjust. I look at my plan, I do adjustments accordingly. I look at my, my action plan for the day. Mm-hmm. And it, it always starts uh, the same way. And oh, yeah, one, one thing I forgot to mention is I put classical music on. Mm-hmm. Because Ooh, okay. I feel like any other type of music just distracts me. It it just uh, it it just initiates emotions like volatile emotions within okay. me. You know, I'm not gonna put hard rock on mm-hmm. things like that. So I I want to stay as neutral as possible. So I put classical music because I find it relaxes me and it helps me maintain focus. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when the uh, when the trading session begins. Oh, well, that's really yeah. something. Hmm. So, so that's something <laughs> something I should consider as well, because sometimes I do listen to music that gets me too pumped up. <laughs> yeah. So because because it's I I feel like and that's my personal experience and that's what I try to teach to, to people is mm-hmm. that you you want to keep trading. Um, as, as as neutral as possible, I, yeah. like neutral in the sense that you know you, you don't want it to play with your emotions too much, and you want to uh-huh. maintain a certain equanimity when you're dealing with the markets. You know you don't want 
don't want winners to make you overly ecstatic or, mm-hmm. or losing trades to make you overly depressed. You know, you, you want to hold those emotions, experience them from a place of freedom. And I feel like the environment plays a lot, it, it plays a huge role in that. Mm-hmm. You want an environment that's as neutral as possible because yeah. everything affects your mental state in one way or another. Yeah, that's and true. Yeah, so I mean that's that's why I, I do in my life. I've developed a a routine and I apply it to the letter. I, I know it sounds boring, but it, it it is what it is. I mean, it helps me a lot uh, as a trader. I s- cultivate a neutral environment, uh, neutral state of mind, and yeah. Yeah. Hey, I mean, what I else are we? We're just creatures of habits. And if you found yeah. a habit that really works for you, that's perfect, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you've been doing this for so long, like longer than I have. And if you could go back to the beginning, if you could go back to the beginning and if you could just give yourself an advice, what would it be? Hmm. It'd be to really take my time, you know, not wow. not try to get rich quick, fa- quick, <laughs> you know. And, and and I'm sure you talk a lot about that as well. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a real it's it's a trap, you know. It's uh-huh. it, and I know there's a there's an idea that you can make a lot of money in uh-huh. this field, and yeah. it's true, you can make a whole lot of money. But the thing is that it's not likely to happen at the beginning. Yes, you can get lucky and get a couple of winning trades massively winning trades in a row and and feel like a genius mm-hmm. and it, it it does happen and a lot of people get lucky like that mm-hmm. but it's uh you know it it doesn't happen that often yeah and you shouldn't expect it to happen to you that's what i mean to say mm-hmm. um, you, sh- you should approach it with a systematic way in a, a structured way and um, yeah, that's that's what I have to say about it. I mean, um, so if I could go back in time and and uh, give myself a piece of my mind, how yeah. what you know, how I currently think right now, it, yeah. it would be to take it slowly and and don't take yourself too seriously. You know, just, just take it easy. Uh, if you if you lose, it's fine. If you win. It's fine as well. Mm. Just keep trading, stay in the game, keep your size small, and over time it'll all work out. You know, just it's it's like anything. It's like guitar. It's like yeah. learning to play guitar. You don't learn to play guitar within two or three months of sporadic playing. You know, unless you're a genius. Okay. Um, but it it's it's like you know you you have to take it slowly. You know you. you you don't learn to play at a professional level level within two or three months. It takes time. It takes repeated practice. It takes learning. It takes uh, um, just getting to know the in- instrument, right? And then yes. getting to master your own fingers. <laughs> and in trade, it's, it's 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 the same thing. You know, it's getting to know the market. It's getting to understand the nature of the market, what it is, and and and. You know what it is. What is its nature? Because a lot of people, they they, they believe that they can predict the market, mm-hmm. and but the market is 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 a very fascinating entity. Mm-hmm. In that, you know, sometimes it may you know you will make predictions and your predictions will turn out right, okay. but other times they they will turn out wrong. You know, even though you follow the same system, the same analysis uh sometimes things just won't turn out you, you will get losses mm-hmm. and that's because the ran- randomness component baked into price movement and it's something that few people understand so take your time mm-hmm. and i'm talking to myself you know my <laughs> my understand. take your time and take it easy and work on understanding the market, work on understanding yourself, and it, it'll all, all be fine, you know. I, 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 totally, I totally get that. In the beginning, I thought 
um, trading would be my way out and I was giving myself the kind of deadline that's almost impossible. I told myself mm. I should be able to double my money in a year. <laughs> Yeah. And and I think most traders go through this phase. I wonder sometimes though if I could come, turn back the time and I could talk to myself back then, would I actually listen to my future self? Because <laughs> you know my yeah. maturity level back then might not be up yeah. par to what I have right now. Yeah, no, it's it's so true. It's so true, and it's it's very interesting that you raise this point because I sort I certainly thing that I wouldn't have listened to myself <laughs> back then. I was really mature too, you know, and I, I I, feel like sometimes you learn, you can only learn through difficult experiences, through pain. Pain is, is an amazing teacher, you know, it mm-hmm. teaches you certain things that other people, that, that book, that books, that courses, that, that, uh, you know, all these other different ways of learning can mm-hmm. teach you you know and i i feel pain is instrumental so yeah i can completely relate to that yeah but has was there a point like do you have any kind of belief in the beginning that clashed with your ability to make money and how did you resolve that absolutely you know celeste i i come from a very poor family mm-hmm. uh, and uh my my mother struggled with um, mental uh, mental illnesses mm-hmm. that made life very very difficult for my siblings and I. Mm-hmm. And so we we grew up, and I I can only talk about myself. I don't want to talk about uh, uh, just put words in in the mouth of my siblings. Mm-hmm. But for me, I I know I I grew up with some pretty dysfunctional beliefs about. Mm-hmm just about money about myself about life in general interesting and and it took a lot of work to really free myself to really develop another way of of looking at myself and the world and and money and all of these things because that's one of the reasons why why i kept failing in the market because Uh i had an an unhealthy relationship with money okay i thought that money was uh was going to bring me durable happiness you know mm-hmm. and and it surely helps you know money is a is a, is a cog in a wheel you know it, it really helps with happiness but it's if for you to find lasting happiness you have to really dig deeper you mm-hmm. know there's a form of happiness out there that is not dependent upon money mm-hmm. upon material possessions upon anything it's dependent upon yourself and if you can access that 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 understanding I mean, you you learn to relax, be, be, because that's the thing that when you focus too hard on on money, it's, it becomes very difficult to relax and to trust your process, because you know losing trade tend to stress you out, and winning yeah. trade make you, make you ecstatic, mm-hmm. and it it makes you develop certain kind of expectations in your mind, mm-hmm. and. And I, I know all of these are just words. People are hearing this right now and they're, they're like, you know, okay, well, it makes sense, you know, but they, they, they don't really understand it. You, you, you know, do your best to understand uh-huh. what I'm telling you. You know, like it's very important that you you uh, develop an understanding of, of uh, what, what's motivating your behavior yeah. in and out of the markets. For you to become a more objective trader it's true it's because money is such an emotional issue like people often think money could fix um whatever is wrong in their life and so i, I do understand that this would make it difficult for people to trade because people want that money to fix yeah. whatever it is and our losses means failure to whatever get that dream yes okay. absolutely so when you're not trading in your personal life, are you consistently doing things that maximize your joy or your life satisfaction, your energy uh, and your connections with others? And if your personal life is say, um, it's not in a good place, like what do you usually do? Okay, so I've, I've found that, it's a, it's a great question by the way. I've oh, found that there's a, that there's a 
relationship between how I feel in my life and mm-hmm. my my trading performance. Mm-hmm. And I've been trading for 13 years now, and I'm seeing that play out over and over and over again. When I'm not in my most optimal state of mind, I, I my results. I, I I tend to do things that uh, I, I I tend to self sabotage. You know, yeah, like yeah. do things that I shouldn't be doing. Yeah. And so that's why I try. I strive to maintain balance in my life in whatever I do. You know, of course, I'm just a human cellist. You know, I I I don't always succeed at that. Yeah. You know, life is hard. You know, it's 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 hard for everyone, and if, even the most uh, quote unquote enlightened people out there. <laughs> and but I I do my best to really cultivate wholesome states of mind. Uh, you know, compassion, gratitude, and so on. Because I've I feel that it works. It, it just it makes my life more. Uh, it's better in many ways, and my trading performance actually reflects that, and yeah. up reflecting that. Um, but yeah, as as you as you know, and I've, as I've said earlier, mindfulness is a big part of my life now. I've been practicing that for, for a number of years, and the the thing about mindfulness is that I. I you know, mindfulness is not about suppressing anything. It's not. It's not about pushing away bad thoughts or yeah. or or difficult emotions or uh-huh. difficult circumstances. It's about. Um, I can't put this. It's 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 about letting things come to the surface, uh-huh. right? Then, uh, like a negative thought or yeah. a difficult emotion. It's it's letting those. Uh, phenomena Uh just rising and coming to the forefront of your mind and it's looking into their nature in a in a very objective manner Uh Uh, not not what the thoughts are telling you about you but what they are as physical phenomena Uh and when you do that when when you look at what a thought is you realize that there's really nothing there. Like it's it's just something arising and it just it passes away. The moment you look at it, it just pops like a balloon. Yeah. It's not there anymore. And and so so that's dealing with with, with difficult thoughts. What what about difficult emotions? Uh-huh. For instance, let's say anger is arising for whatever reason, or if you know, let's say it's fear or, or envy or greed. Uh-huh. If you learn to experience your emotions objectively not with craving and aversion if you learn to experience them from a place of acceptance real genuine acceptance from a place of freedom and you don't judge what's arising for you in the moment as a difficult emotions uh, uh, in, you know emotion um you know what does it feel like to experience this phenomenon yeah mm-hmm. without label or, or judgment just the raw physical sensations of it mm-hmm. When when you do that, you you, you notice that uh, first, well, an, an emotion is just some neutral sensations that uh-huh. arise in in your body, and you can learn to experience it as, as as such on a reliable basis, as a as a neutral sensation arising within that space you call your your body, and you can learn to accept it and and befriend that emotion, uh-huh. and. Yeah, that's that's the whole point of, of of mindfulness. And when you develop that habit, Celeste, uh-huh. it really it it affects different all aspects of, of your life. You know, yeah. uh-huh. you, you you become a more compassionate being towards yourself and others. Uh-huh. You know, and you you really also realize that you have the armor of choice always uh-huh. within you. You have the you have the choice not to believe what your mind is telling you about yeah. this place and not to act blindly, you know, yeah. not to to express destructive emotions out mm-hmm. in the world that, you know, that, that eventually ends up hurting people you love mm-hmm. or, even, that, you know, if eventually causes you to make stupid mistakes, decisions in, in the market. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, really... I totally agree about that. Um, I remember during moments of say, um, negative emotions, and it would get me stop to to overthink, right? It would get me to overthink. It would cause me to imagine stuff that haven't really happened yet, and I would start thinking, like wondering if. Why am I making things up? <laughs> like yeah. sometimes emotions can make you start to look at the situation, at the perception of um, according to how you feel, even if it really isn't that way. And I really understand that what you said that that it would be so much better if we stop fighting ourselves, or if yeah. we aren't the slave to whatever we feel. And That that's really important for us as traders because the market will constantly test us, and I, I do understand. So thank you for that. Yeah, and and you you've expressed you you've resumed my my whole uh, speech right there in a very a very beautiful way in a very simple way, and yeah, it, it's 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 about befriending ourselves, it's about changing your your relationship to your own experience. Mm. And slowly becoming someone who can consistently act in his or her own best interest. Yes. Yeah. So, so that that's you know, that's I, I guess that's a selfish way of saying it, but of, of of putting it. But overall, if you're a better human, more thoughtful, less reactive, you're also making the world a better place. Oh, that's so nice. I really love that. I know this takes a lot of self work and a lot of traders don't want that. They want to go straight to technical analysis or whatever strategy they think would give them money. But the trading involves a lot of self-work. After all, those are just tools and the person who's still executing it is us. But for busy people like, you know, dads or other people who are busy with other stuff with their life, what would you advise to them to strengthen their, you know, trading psyche even if they have a lot of tax, tasks and duties? In their daily routine, what do you think they could do to fortify yeah. it on a daily basis? What what I, so on my blog and mm -hmm. on my Twitter feed, I talk a lot about mindfulness and meditation, yeah. and I I feel like on, even 20 minutes of, of just sitting with yourself by yourself, mm -hmm. uh, it 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 can bring tremendous change in your in your life. You know, it can help you become a more uh, just objective person overall you know mm -hmm. I, I can't remember the quote um, it's a quote from uh, I, I can't remember anyways uh, but it's um, yeah it's a, it's a very simple thing that you, you can do you can just learn to sit in meditation and mm -hmm. observe your thoughts and your emotions just just 20 minutes that's all you know and and i know people have lives they have different tasks and so on that they they need to do throughout the day and you know just 20 minutes and it's gonna have ripple effects on on your life and on your day you know you're gonna uh feel things differently mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah You know, I did try to do this meditation, and I know for a lot of people who starting, it's really difficult in the beginning. Like, I could not yeah. get past a few seconds without obsessing over a thought. How did you break through that? I mean, you said you did this for like six months from, <laughs> from 5 a.m., I don't know, yeah. 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. How were you able yeah. to break through the, the initial discomfort of just sitting there and trying not to overly think okay so my first meditation retreat mm -hmm. uh, I was, it, it was quite an experience because, okay uh, back then I I didn't know what meditation was and I just went to this retreat and I was sitting there the whole day meditating with with a bunch of other well, you, you know other people and more experienced meditators and i felt like i was competing against them I was <laughs> looking at how peaceful they looked and you know how you know how enlightened and peaceful and 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 i in inside my mind it was just just a hurricane a storm yeah and my thoughts were all over the place and i didn't like being there and all i wanted to do is 
just pack my stuff and leave. And and also I was feeling a lot of pain because I have chronic lower back pain. It was, it was a, an old injury. Um, so just sitting there the whole day, you know, for, for, for days, just made my, it was a very difficult experience. It, wow. Let's put it that way. But, but then eventually something happened. I uh-huh. started, started looking at my thoughts. Okay. And I started seeing all the stories playing in, the, in, in my mind, you know? And I started uh, experiencing them from a more, from a place of freedom, you know? Like I started seeing them what they are, just, just, a, just uh, random, impermanent apparitions apparitions in, in, in my mind like um and that's that's when the real breakthrough happened i started looking at my thoughts in a more objective manner uh-huh and and, and from from there on it, it it this this quality of mindfulness in my mind became stronger and stronger and it it came to a point where i started realizing that my thoughts aren't real mm-hmm. you know it's it's not like they're not they, they are real in a sense that you know they're they're appearing they're appearing in your mind and yeah and it, it's 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 a phenomenon mm-hmm. but they're not real in the sense that they 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 have an impermanent nature and they they don't always reflect reality you mm-hmm. know they, they they reflect your past conditioned uh you know, experiences uh-huh. and patterns of thoughts, and, yeah. And so, so all of these, all of these different things, they they just, uh, they they, they just perpetuate themselves, and they, they those are the thoughts that you have. You know, your past experiences, and your impression of things, uh-huh. and perception, and all all of that. And you you can learn to experience all of that. From really in, in a very detached perspective, in, in a detached way. That's that's what I meant to say. I really um, like that. Takes it's just twenty minutes a day, or if if you have less time, you could do it for five minutes a day and then build up from there. You just need to job that to explain to 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 really to pinpoint. Uh, what you're supposed to do because mm-hmm. some people don't, don't understand it this way mm-hmm. it's i feel like it's something that you have to experience yourself just just sit with yourself and just observe your thoughts observe yeah. them in, in in an objective manner don't generate other thoughts you're experiencing just mm-hmm. experience them from a place of freedom and when you do that repeatedly it's this quality of it's a quality of mindfulness so this mm-hmm. quality strengthens in your in your mind. It takes root and it it, it, and it becomes more and more uh, powerful. And and then it you know your your life becomes to uh, starts to change in a more positive way. I totally believe what you said because it's all about being able to sit with ourselves, and it just blows my mind how how many traders lose money just be just because they can't sit still you know yeah and, yeah absolutely. And it's all about that you know, this you know they have a thought that says that you know they should enter this trade even if it goes against their plan <laughs> and they just go blindly, blindly you know they, they are reactive they're not they're they're not reflective enough mm-hmm. and it's like i and that's why i i, I Think that mindfulness and trading should go hand in hand because it's, it's about creating this buffer between you and your thoughts and it's about experiencing them you know more objectively keep repeating that but it's 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 you know completely it's, agree it's the way it is yeah